Here's a video about making a plastic shield for the back of my uh, Kabuta BX to keep the snow off. Now I purchased this sheet of plastic from HomeDepot.com. It's a um, Macron polycarbonate that's uh, supposed to be good for windows and stuff like that. So I ordered it online and they actually shipped it to my store a couple days later and I picked it up and I must say it was really packaged well and um you know, it came in good shape and there was no way that it could have been damaged the way it was packaged. So I decided to try to uh, set up and cut the pieces off that I need with my little battery operated DeWalt saw there. And it turned out that the saw instantly jammed up on it. Um, the material just, I think the blade of the saw, the carbide blade actually heated the material so quickly that it just kind of... Uh, melted around the blade there and actually stopped the blade very quickly so that was not an option for cutting it then the next thing I grabbed was one of those uh, little shaker cutter tools um, and this is just one of those Harbor Freight ones and I put on a round uh, metal and wood cutting blade and just set it on the lowest vibrating speed that they had and it, I will say it did cut it but it's not the best method uh, you know from my experience here as long as you kept it going slow vibrating slow it did not melt to the blade and stick so it allowed me to get the piece that I needed cut off to start out with so there it is um, you know you can see it's a 180.187 thick and it does have a nice protective sheeting on both sides of it so it did arrive in perfect condition so after hacking that piece off there were a lot of melted burrs and stuff on it so first thing I did was go back and clean up that edge with the uh, router and I just put a flush cut bearing uh, tool on there with a half inch diameter cut with a half inch bearing on it and clamped a straight edge of wood to the piece of plastic there and set the router for the lowest speed that it would turn at and this actually did a really nice clean job of cutting it up and giving me a nice burr free straight edge on it. So now you can see I have a uh, nice piece that's cut to be 36 inches by 48 and a quarter for the shield that I'm making. It was a little bit over four feet wide so then the next thing I'm going to do is round the corners on it so there are no sharp corners and I just have this little jig that I made for woodworking that I usually clamp onto the corner of my boards and use that to clean up the radiuses on it so I'm going to just clamp it on the plastic sheet like this just kind of line it up and then flip it over so I can use the uh, bearing on the router to just kind of follow the radius here and cut the corner um, I had to just take some little cuts off of it because I didn't pre-trim this to uh, be anywhere close to the radius. So it did take a couple passes till I got a nice sharp or nice uh, sharp cut on there, clean cut. And I just went back and I did all the radiuses for now. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what the end piece was going to look like, but I knew I wanted to break these corners so there'd be no sharp spots to deal with later. So at this point in time I decided the uh, best thing to do would be to create a cardboard template of exactly what I have here to work with on the tractor because it's going to involve some bending and fitting and stuff. So I made a template the exact size and then you can see I went back and I started trimming some corners out of it and parts like that to make it so I could fit it around those tail lights and stuff and actually I uh, did a little bit of bending on it to make it so it would fit up tight underneath the uh, top shield there and I just uh, you know just fiddled around with it and got it so that it was comfortable wasn't in the way of the seating or anything like that and this I decided was going to be the um, the final shape that I was going to be dealing with so this really did allow me to make sure that I wouldn't mess up a $40 piece of plastic by cutting it wrong or folding it wrong. And um, then it was just a real easy matter to take that down in the shop and transfer it onto the piece of plastic and start doing some more cutting out. Um, now for this I decided to get out the jigsaw and try that 
after kind of uh, having failure with the other two methods of cutting it and I put a fine toothed metal cutting blade on it and I just ran it at a very slow speed and you can see this actually is the best method for cutting it that I've uh, tried so far. I must say that this old Bosch jigsaw is one of the first tools that I bought and um, it's just been an amazing tool and been through so many hours of cutting and it seems to work for everything so I would have to say a good jigsaw is going to be a you know a handy first tool to get. So I took in when I made these cuts I stayed about an eighth inch inside of the line so I could go back later and clean it all up like I did the other edges so here it is I got that corner template out again because um, I cut off that first corner I put on I guess I could have saved time and not bothered with it but I really wasn't sure at the time. So I just clamped that on and then I added another piece to uh, get the return cut there cleaned up and got that all clamped in place and just flipped it over and same thing with the router uh, ball bearing piloted bit running as slow as the router would turn and it just uh, went through it and really cleaned it up good and did a really good job and it did turn it into a uh, polished clear edge that you could see through so I was real happy with the quality of cut that it gave me. You did have to go kind of slow so nothing would melt or stick though. So I got these two cutouts cleaned up and basically they're both symmetrical cutouts so I just flipped the, uh, the fixture there that I made and did the other side next. Um, then my big problem was trying to figure out how to bend this sheet. Now the instructions that came with it said that you could actually bend up to an eighth inch but over that you had to hot form it and I did not have any any of the tooling needed to heat it and bend it so um, now I had to come up with a different solution. I tried a sample piece in my little break and I tried bending the full 3 16 thickness and I could not bend it whatsoever. Then I went back and I tried putting a groove in it about uh, down to about a hundred thousandths thickness and at that point I was actually able to bend it so I decided to try that on those two bends that I have actually three bends I have to make on this sheet and I just used a 90 degree V groove cutter in the router and you can see this one has a tip busted off of it so it did give me about a 0.06 wide flat spot that really helped out in the bending I think. So I just set a guide up along uh, the proper distance away from the line that I wanted to cut bend on and ran the router along it to cut that v-groove um, approximately 90 thousandths deep into the panel and there you can see there's the first one cut and basically I went back and did the same thing on the other line too and then I also did a cut across the bottom of the sheet where I wanted to just put a small bend in to stiffen it where it went across the roll cage. So with that in there I took it out into the shop and put it in that little Harbor Freight bender that I had and here you can see I'm using all the force that I possibly have to bend this. This stuff actually even though I cut the V in it, it still was harder to bend than a sheet of 16 gauge steel. It was really you know really a tough bending material and I just wanted to bend it to about 40 degrees so I bent one side and then I flipped it around and I did the other side and you can see just how much force it's actually taken it's it's all I could apply and then um, I actually had to go back and flip it around in the little break here because it did not bend even all the way across so I threw it back in the other way around and bent it again, went back and cleaned it up and that got everything really nice and straight and square on the two bends. It's not the, you know, the best machine to use for bending something like this, but there you can see it actually worked pretty good. And then I had to just bend a couple degree angle across the bottom there on that piece to stiffen it. And here you can see me just fighting with that for you know, it was only like a 28 inch bend, so it is quite a tough material for forming if you don't have the proper equipment for forming it hot. So now it's time to go back out and just kind of check the fit. And um, I have my actual sheet here and have to get it up around the, that top bracket and then let it fall back in and 
drop it over the lights and back down and turned out that it was actually a very perfect fit um just just fit in there nice and tight and uh, there was clearance to get it in and it stayed really nice and flat and kind of you can see it really does protect the back of the machine there and i took a sharpie and just put some marks where the roll bar were um it's time to come up with a mounting scheme for it and i basically decided that i was just going to use some tie wraps to hold it in place because i really didn't want to drill into the roll bar so what i did is i marked out some location holes for drilling some quarter inch holes for the tie wraps that i chose and you can see there's three three sets of holes on each side there so that'll give me a total of six tie wraps and um, there are just checking the sides of the hole to make sure it was proper and I think each tie wrap is rated for about 50 pounds of force so hopefully they'll hold it in place if not I'll make some brackets at a later time but I really think that this is gonna work out good and I went back and I just kind of trimmed along the inside line there to remove that back backing paper so I could go back and apply some uh, foam there to keep it from vibrating. This is just I cut the cut that backing paper on the other side here you can see and it just kind of filed the shape of the roll bar there. And just barely, you know, I tried not to mark the plastic too bad, but I just needed this out of the way to stick the foam tape on it. So that was a easy job to remove. And then I had some of this camper tape that was 3 16 of an inch thick laying around. I purchased rolls of it at my dollar store years ago, and I use it a lot for padding things like this. And... It does work out good and it's pretty much um you know it can stand up to the weather and stuff too so first thing i did i had to cut this one side for that bracket that holds that little red triangle i removed the bracket but um for the triangle but you still have this mounting piece welded onto the roll bar so you have to go around that and i just uh i cut out this tape you can see to clear that and then tried to keep it an eighth of an inch inside of the line that I had drawn with the sharpie then to form it around the the top side where the roll bar curves in I had to remove that peel off backing and from that point forward you can actually just kind of stretch it around a curve and get a real nice curve going with it and the adhesive does stick down really good so you know I figured this would eliminate any problem of vibrations or rattles or anything at a later time so there's the first side the tape stuck on and now I'm just going back to do the other side and give you a little better shot of how that tape stretches around for the radius here once you remove that peel off backing So it's just a matter of going back now and trimming off the extra piece there that hangs over just to kind of get an even fit. And that goes up to the uh, bracket on the top of the tractor. So I decided to peel off the rest of this uh, protective sheeting on the inside now that I was pretty much done with any fabrication on it. And from this point forward, I shouldn't cause too much scratching. And then I just flipped it over and took a countersink bit and went around those uh, holes for the tie wraps and broke the edges on them so there wouldn't be a sharp edge and here it is the final fitting in place and mounting of it now um, I still have my mower deck on I still haven't cleaned up weeds uh, the leaves yet I must say um, still it's late in the season and they haven't come down yet so I don't have the snow blower mounted permanently on here yet so this is just getting ready for the future and once I got it in place to before I put those straps around I had to peel off that outer sheet and there you can see the stuff is really it's a great material to work with it's um, perfectly clear um, supposed to be a window grade material and it's uh, quite stiff once you get it cut down to this size piece and it doesn't 
once I got those tie wraps and stuff in there, it really doesn't vibrate or rattle or anything. It's really um, stiff and good where the, the bends are on it and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be a, a great material to work with. Plus, it's polycarbonate, so it won't shatter if a rock or something should hit it by mistake. So, you know, I think it was a good choice. And Home Depot seemed to be the uh, only place that I could find it at a reasonable price in this thickness. There it is. I'm just using those tie wraps and pulling them tight. And then just go back and trim them off once you got everything mounted properly. And there they are. They were just like 12-inch tie wraps I had left over from a job years ago. And there it is, all fit in place. Um, really, it mounted nice and tight and no vibrations. It just fit perfect. And um, you can't even see that it's there looking at it. You can see it did it did come out real nice. And hopefully it'll do the job and there's absolutely no interference when you're on the seat. And at a future time, once I see how the blower works, I'm probably going to put a side shield on the, one of the sides there that I use most. So to just kind of keep the rest of the snow out of my face. Hopefully the backup camera arrives soon too so I can get that mounted next. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.